Hi everyone, hope you are keeping safe. I've recently picked up the E3D Revo Micro, so I thought I'll just record this installation process of my Prusa Mini because I can't find any on YouTube. As you can see, I've printed the V2 bracket which I've linked below because this uses the original um, Prusa fan. I also picked up the 0.6 nozzle as you can see. So I will open this box in front of you guys and you guys can see what's inside. Note that the Prusa Mini requires the 24 volt version. The whole thing comes assembled as you can see, so I'll just take it out of the box. Also, please note that there are actually cables and connectors under the white cardboard. I will be referring to the online instructions which is very detailed and I will link it below. And to start off, I'll take this up and place a cloth on top of the print beds to prevent any scratches. I started off with removing the connectors and cables from the machine as I've got the Octopi attached to it as you can see. Then I removed the power connector from the back. Next, you take a 2.5mm hex key. I think I got it wrong, but anyway, you can see it there. And move the print head to the center to allow sufficient space. I then swap the incorrect size hex key to the correct one. Note, it's 2.5mm hex key. So you can start by removing the top screw as you can see by following the assembly instruction. Everything is pretty easy and self-explanatory. E3D did a very good job in showing the whole process clearly. As this was my first time removing the print head, I was being careful not to yank the cable out. So I took my time and be very careful by slowly wiggling the fan assembly from the rear. Next, I took a wrench to remove the top brass fitting from the Bowden tube. What's next were to remove the remaining screws from the print head by following exactly what is shown on the assembly website. Everything is very clear as I said before. So I will try to show you as much angle as I can just to show you guys, you know, the whole process. I was being extra careful and gentle because this was my first time removing this assemblies as you can see so you might want to do that as well
Once I've put the fan in the front, I start by removing the screws behind. Apologies for blocking the view, but there will be some different angles following this. It's definitely easier if you can rotate the printer and do it from the front, but because I've got my tripod set up, I do not want to be moving the position. For some reason this screw is a bit too tight so I have to be extra gentle and careful by holding the head assembly as you can see. Once the last screw was removed, the whole assembly just became loose. So it's definitely a good idea to put a piece of cloth on the print bed. Next is the installation of the Revo Micro on the V2 bracket. So the instructions recommends that we thread the screws onto the holes back and forth once just so that it's easier when it comes to installing the bracket onto the print head. I would definitely recommend that. And if you have the square nut version, slot them in now. As I will be using the stock Prusa mini fan, I need to remove the small fan that comes with the Revo Micro. So you can remove this by pulling the fan off as you can see, it takes a bit of force. Next, I took off the collar from the top of the core as you can see. I then tried to remove the bolt and tube clip but I didn't do it which I should have because it was actually quite difficult for me to remove later on as you can see. So I would recommend removing the blue colored clip now. Here I was just screwing the core onto the bracket as you can see.
It was quite fiddly with the heater core wires dangling and there isn't much area to hold as you can see. So what I did next was to unscrew the nozzles from the unit and also the heater core from the unit. So you can see that the nozzle just removed like that. Apologies for being off screen, but to remove the heater core wires, just pull it from the heatsink as it's being held by a spring. Once those heater core wires were removed, it was actually quite easy to screw them in as, as you can see. So what I did is just use some blowers to remove any possible residuals from within the heatsink. Next was to remove the blue color Bowden clip. As I said before, it's definitely easier to remove it just now because this took me some time as you can see because the thing is so tiny and I was afraid of breaking it. After removing this, I started reassembling the whole unit back together just by reversing the whole process. So to attach the heater core wires back onto the heatsink, all you need to do is just press firmly back onto the heatsink, it will pop in place. Then I just follow the assembly instructions by installing the screws, the bracket, everything to complete the print head assembly. You can see that the print head has been assembled. The PTFE tube is installed as well, which I'll explain later because I forgot to record it. But you have to pay attention to the routing of the cable through the slot there. Basically for the PTFE tube cutting, I just cut the tube as close to the brass collar as possible and it has been okay so far. I haven't installed the fan back on because I was messing about with the wires assembly but you can see how the connectors are being connected these are pretty huge I wish E3D can make them you know slimmer so that it's easier to slot them into the, um, the wire mesh you could see that the existing heater unit is there so what you need to do is remove them from the sleeve and those are the existing connectors on the motherboard and that will need to be removed here you can see the original assembly which I have removed Also, please note that you will need to remove this terminal from the plug by using a small flathead screwdriver. Once the terminal has been removed, you need to screw the two wires back onto the terminal. 
then it's just a matter of plugging in onto the existing board as you can see there and for cable management what I did was just shove that all onto the top side it has enough space as you can see there so just put the cover on and just screw them back down You will also need three cable ties as you would have cut it during the, the um, you know the assembly process. Where you can get them is this bag of spare when you bought your Prusa Mini. Dig them out and as you can see you have quite a lot there and you only need three of them. What I'm going to show you next is the routing of the cable onto the sleeve. There was actually a paper with serial number on it which is you know making the assembly process quite difficult so I had to cut it away yeah it was originally there and it was blocking I think it will be blocking the the airflow of the fan so I cut it away and put it in the box the tucking in of the cable into the sleeve was actually not that bad because I heard people saying it took them longer but for me I took my time and it was not bad and as you can see it's quite neat finally I plug everything back in including the power and turn it on as I was using the original fan, the calibration should be successful. I'll show you the whole process here. I'll speed it up here because it's long and boring. So this is my first print after just doing a quick first layer calibration. So this came off the print bed so easily and the results are very very good. And if you have printed this you know how demanding this print is. So I printed this using the 0.4 nozzle and everything works brilliantly. Bear in mind I've done nothing other than first layer calibration. This is a long one, so hope you find this useful and thanks for watching. Bye!